Hi there, I'm Dr. Stephen Fallon and welcome to my video channel. Uh, what I would like to share with everyone today is a little short keynote presentation about guided implant surgery. And if you've been to any of my lectures in the last year, you'll know that I'm very keen and very excited about guided implant surgery. It's something I've implemented about a year ago and I find that the benefits to the patients are outstanding. As a matter of fact, last Thursday, I saw a patient, we placed two central incisor implants uses, using guided surgery, and I called him the next day and he said it felt like I didn't even have anything done. You know, everything just feels totally normal, I have no swelling, no pain, and this is the overwhelming uh, response from patients. In fact, I haven't had any patient with an adverse post-operative reaction to guided implant surgery. Everybody's having the same response when I call them the next day. It's like I'm feeling comfortable, I'm not having swelling, and I'm uh, feeling like everything is really good. So I'd like to share with you the little keynote. It's going to walk you through the technique that we use. Um, in, you know, not in extreme detail, but it just give you an overview of how we're doing the technique for guided implant surgery. I'm using the Strawman system as well as the Simplant software. I'm using a Simplant Surgy Guide, which is a stereolithographic surgery guide, which is very precise so that I can do all the guided surgery, basically, if the patient has enough bone, through a punch in the tissue. So I don't have to reflect a flap and open up the patient's, uh, you know, open up the patient's uh, area, the ridge. And I think that that's a lot of why we don't have a post-operative discomfort or swelling, because we're not really disrupting the blood supply and peeling back the gingiva and causing uh, the patient to have an adverse post-operative reaction. So uh, let's look at the keynote now, and I hope you enjoy this video. So here's the keynote for guided implant surgery. Again, I'm very excited about this technique. I think it's very beneficial to the patient, and it makes implant surgery, the surgical part of the, the appointment, very simplified for us. As long as you've done your pretreatment uh, implant planning properly with the guided, uh, with the um, Simplant software or whatever guided uh, software you're going to use, and you have a good uh, CBVT cone beam volumetric tomography image for the patient, the whole case will go very smoothly. So what I think that this does for us, for us as, as uh, um, a dentist, whoever's placing the implants, is it increases the precision and the predictability of your implant surgery. For, patient, for patients, as I've said, it increases the uh, likelihood that they're going to have very little post-operative complication and uh, discomfort, but for us, it increases our precision and predictability, meaning the implants are going to be placed in the correct location. You're going to have the implants at the correct angulation and the correct position for the restorative treatment, because with the uh, surgical guide, you're going to get exactly what you um, requested after planning the case out in the Simplant software. So along with the surgical guide, you get the surgical protocol, and it's basically going to tell you exactly which instruments to use and which size of instruments to use to get the correct depth. And with the, simple, or with the uh, Strawman system, they have a, a short, a long, and an extra long guided implant drill, and then they have drill handles. And you'll see this when I show you the kit. So here's the kit. You have different drill handles for the uh, guided uh, drills and then a different drill handle for the profile drills and the guided taps. And so basically the system's laid out very logically and you can follow it very easily to get the correct depth and the surgical guide will give you the correct orientation but the drills with the little spoons will give you the correct depth control because they have stops on them and they'll only drill to a certain depth based on the protocol that you're given. So you can be really comfortable that you're not going to over drill the depth of the implant and get into trouble with the patient's anatomy. You can see here are three different uh, guided drills and there's also a milling cutter here on the left hand side and these drills are uh, stopped there's little stops on them so you only go to the correct depth here's another example of some pilot drills and three different lengths 
So the system's very elegant. As I said in my introduction, I'm virtually always just doing these through a punch hole in the gingiva, so I'm not reflecting a flap. And I think that that's why the patients have a comfortable experience. But uh, this is the uh, gingival punch instrument kit that I bought. It's a rotary tissue punch. And the one that I'm using is mostly the smallest one, the 4.0. Uh, there's larger ones. I really don't think I would ever really have the use for the larger ones. I'm generally using a 4.0. The kit doesn't have a 3.0, but I've got some hand uh, tissue punches for 3.0 situations. And uh, this works out really nicely. You'll see it in the video. So here's the patient we're going to present. The patient uh, has lots of, uh, you know, has lots of bone, has a good ridge. The nerve, or the inferior alveolar nerve is fairly far away, so we can get in a good size implant. And he has a wide ridge with adequate uh, keratinized tissue. So there's lots of tissue. Uh, you know, if you don't have a wide enough ridge, you don't have enough tissue, you have to do some pre-implant uh, ridge augmentation before you do this technique. But with this patient, you know, the case was really set up nicely for this kind of technique with a tissue punch. Again, case selection is very critical when you're planning cases for this kind of technique. It's not for every patient, but there are a lot of patients out there that could benefit from this technique and have adequate width of the ridge and adequate tissue. So here's my Simplant window, and basically this will show you where we plan the implant position. And you can see that the inferior alveolar nerve is adequately uh, away from the length of my uh, implant. And this is a Strawman tissue level implant. I find in molars the Strawman tissue level implant's an excellent option. We don't need to go with the bone level implant and submerge the collar. Um, in the anterior portion of the mouth, basically bicuspids forward, I generally use the bone level implants. So here's the surgery guide. This was created by um, Simplant, and it's very precisely uh, designed so that I will get my implant into the exact location that I had in the Simplant software. And there's the 5.0 uh, sleeve, basically. This is a Strawman sleeve with the Simplant Surgery Guide, and now the little spoons from Strawman will fit precisely into the sleeve, and then the drills go through the spoons. So you'll see that in the clinical video. Here's another view of the uh, surgical guide, and here's the surgical guide in the patient's mouth. And we did this surgery with a um, Ivoclar Optrogate in place. I find that that's a very nice retractor, and I can see very easily. And I filmed the surgery with my uh, Zeiss microscope. So again, here's the protocol for this particular case. I'm going to be using extra long guided drills and the plus three uh, drill handle. So basically, this is going to be a lot of instrumentation to fit in the patient's mouth for a 3-6 location. So the only problem I'm going to have is, do I have enough mouth opening space to fit this instrumentation in? And you'll see what I had to do to make this work. Um, it says no implant depth control, and that what they're meaning there is just for the profile drill, because you can't profile drill a wide neck implant through a 5.0 millimeter uh, collar. So I can't get depth control with my profile drill, but that's not really a big issue. I get complete depth control with the guided drills.